Hey there, this is MathCamp321 presenting a lesson on exponential functions and horizontal asymptotes. So the general template for any exponential function is e of x equals a times b to the x minus h plus k. And in a prior video, I discussed that the, the role of k is that it reveals to us the location of this thing called the horizontal asymptote. So there's going to be a, a horizontal asymptote at whatever this value happens to be here. Now what that means is, if you have just a very, very general exponential function like this, y equals 2 to the x, that would imply y equals 2 to the x plus 0, which would mean that there's going to be a horizontal asymptote for this particular graph at y equals 0. And that's what we're going to explore in this lesson. Why is there, in fact, an asymptote at y equals 0? So what I've done is I've written out the function y equals 2 to the x, and that's in the purple box. And I've also constructed a partial table of values, ranging from negative 3 up to 3. And what we're going to do is plug in each of those x values and see what the output is going to be. And then we're going to plot those points. So to start, if I were to substitute a 3 in for x into this x right here, I would end up getting 2 to the power of 3, or 2 cubed, which is 8. If I were to plug in 2, I would get 2 squared, which is 4. If I were to substitute in 1, I would get 2 to the first power, which is 2. If I were to substitute in 0, I would get 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. Now here's where it gets interesting. If I substitute in a negative value, I really have to be thinking about my rules of exponents. And it just so happens when I substitute in negative 1, I end up getting 2 to the negative 1, which is the same as 1 over 2 to the first. And 1 over 2 to the first is 1 half. Now, the next substitution would be 2 to the negative 2. And I'm, I'm going to see where I have room to do this. 2 to the negative 2 is like 1 over 2 squared, which would be 1 fourth. And finally, we would substitute a negative 3, which would give us 2 to the negative 3 power, or 1 over 2 cubed, or 1 eighth. Now the pattern would reveal that as we continue to drop by 1, this number here is going to get smaller and smaller. 1 half transitions to 1 fourth, then to 1 eighth, then to 1 16th, and then to 1 32nd, and then to 1 64th. That fraction is going to get very, very small, but it's never going to become zero. And that's where this whole idea of an asymptote comes in. So it's approaching zero, but it's never quite going to get there. So I'm going to put this HA at y equals zero, which is another name for the x-axis. I'll plot the points that we came up with. Uh, we had 1, 2, 3 over here. 3 got sent to 8, 2 got sent up to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 got sent to 2, 0 got sent to 1, negative 1, let me just set this negative x-axis over here, negative 1 was sent to 1 half, negative 2 was sent to 1 fourth, negative 3 was sent to 1 eighth. So we can see that as we transition from, or as we read the graph from right to left, which is usually the backwards of the way we would normally do it, these points are becoming half in height of what they had been. So here was a height of one, a height of a half, a height of a fourth, a height of an eighth, then a height of a sixteenth, a height of one thirty-second, a height of one sixty-fourth, etc. So it's getting closer and closer to zero, but it's never quite getting there. So these points reveal to us the exponential growth curve. So let me try to connect the points as carefully as I can. Okay, so here is our exponential growth curve. And I hope it's now clear that the x-axis serves as an asymptote, as indicated by the values in the table off to the left. Let's take a look at one more example. So now we're on slide two, and I'm giving you a new function to consider its HA. And this function is y equals one half to the x plus zero. So even though there's no number at the end, there is an implied plus zero. 
which means we're going to have an HA at y equals 0. And let's see why that is. If I were to plug in or substitute in 3 for x, I would get 1 half cubed, which is 1 eighth. If I were to substitute in 2 for x, I would get 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. If I were to substitute 1 in for x, I would get 1 half. Substituting in 0 for x, I would get 1 half to the 0, and anything to the power of 0 is 1. And this is where it becomes a little bit interesting. If I do 1 half to the negative 1, it conjures up a special rule of exponents that says, if you're raising a fraction to a negative exponent, reciprocate the fraction and make the exponent positive. So in the end, that's just going to turn into 2. We'll look at that rule one more time as we substitute in negative 2. We get 1 half to the negative 2 power. If we're raising a fraction to a negative exponent, we reciprocate the fraction and we make the exponent positive, which would give us 4. And then doing the last substitution, we plug in negative 3, getting us 1 half to the negative 3, or 2 cubed, which is 8. Now let's set up our axes so we can plot these points. So 3 is now 1 eighth, 2 is now 1 fourth, 1 is now 1 half, 0 is sent to 1, negative 1 is sent to 2, negative 2 is sent to 4, negative 3 is sent to 8. And what we have here is an exponential decay curve. And I'll try to illustrate this graph as best as I can by connecting these points. Now keep in mind, if we were to continue this pattern upward and substitute in 4, we would get 1 16th and then 1 32nd, which again evokes this idea of an asymptote. So I'm going to put the asymptote in here because you can see the dots are getting closer and closer. And now I'm going to try to draw this decay curve. Okay, so I missed a couple of the points, but I think you get the idea. Uh, so in this lesson, we talked about why exponential functions have horizontal asymptotes.